the ultimate all-in-one electric home brewing system is here. The new Grainfather G40 can produce up to 11 gallons of beer and features all the latest advancements in home brewing technology, including wireless control so you can monitor your brew day from the Grainfather app. With an innovative new grain basket design that improves workflow, reaching mash efficiencies of 75% or more is easy. The 3300 watt heating element brings your wort to a boil quickly without any scorching and the large hot plate filter guarantees that no unwanted grain matter or hop chub reaches your fermenter. Every G40 comes standard with a high powered built-in pump that can handle temperatures over 200 degrees Fahrenheit and a full three year warranty that guarantees you'll be able to keep on brewing no matter what. The Grainfather G40 is available now at your favorite homebrew retailer or online at grainfather.com. Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells, guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our Trub Club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Tips for transporting kegs, brewing good beer on a budget, calculating gravity after adding DME, and buying used versus new When it comes to kegerators, this is Homebrew Happy Hour, episode 279. Hello and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325 305-6107. I'm your host, Joshua Steuben. Today, I'm joined by the Director of Operations at CM Becker down there, Mr. James Carlson, as well as the President and Chief Keg Washer of KegConnection.com. The, the, you look busy. Do, are we are we taking up your time, Mr. Todd Burns? You look like... You are, you are kind of taking up my time, actually. I love... like we were. You know, it's so funny. You were eating... or Let me kill the music, because I know how much you love the music, Todd. Um, <laughs> we were... We were talking before recording and you were eating so we're like i was waiting on you i could have started all that pre-roll while you were eating and you it would have timed where you were done by the time because i noticed like you feel you're like okay i'm done eating we can record and it's still another three minutes worth of like bumpers and stuff so uh my bad next time i'll time that better because you like got up did you go to the bathroom you had a lot of time oh no i i um <laughs> just uh yeah, I had to leave for a second. Oh, okay. So. Oh, yeah. oh, oh okay. Um, anyway, I, I had to blow my nose if you really want to know. Oh, I've been well, that's sick and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have been sick. It's not COVID. It's not COVID. Nope. And that's all that people. Test. That's all that people care about these days. So as long as we just, it wasn't COVID, what do you think it was? Just a summer cold? Yeah. Oh, okay. I forget people get sick, James, from other things. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. i thought the flu was eradicated right yeah i I well i think uh i got sick one time up there i had breathed in i i think you thought i was like probably had covid and i was gonna get everyone sick because i could see the look on your face <laughs> I, I i had done all the recipes and now i wear a mask when i do all the grain milling because when you're milling 25 plus recipe kits and your face is over that mill and the grain dust everywhere turns out it it really makes you feel sick and so I came. Well, I mean, you were wearing a mask as is required when you use a grain mill, right? I 
can't read. I'm not literate. I didn't see your sign. <laughs> Actually, I didn't see your sign until after you told me, yeah, idiot, you have to wear a mask. I looked at the sign. I was like, oh, my God, there's a sign. <laughs> of course there is. Um, it, it was only one time I did that. Every month since then, I, I always wear a mask. And, and my sunglasses usually are some kind of eyewear because that grain dust, holy hell, I came down. I mean, you, know, you know, James absolutely refuses to ever wear anything safety related. He drives me crazy. <laughs> Do you really? Why? He won't wear he won't wear earplugs, safety glasses, <laughs> mask, nothing. Why, James? You're a man. <laughs> oh man, by God. Because <laughs> I'm a man. What, what was that you said? What? <laughs> or you're blind? I can't see you. I'm a man. But yeah, I came downstairs that day that I was doing those recipes and my like, eyes are I'm basically crying and I'm <clears throat> and James is like, you gotta if you're sick, you gotta go. I was like, no nah, grain, grain dust. Ugh. But Anyway, which is, hey, that's my perfect segue to let y'all know for the month of May. Well, first off, all of April 1 already shipped out. One person did reach out and say they, they hadn't gotten theirs, but I was able to remedy it because the tracking, I was able to get them the tracking code. Apparently, no one got their tracking codes from me last month, and it must be because when I was entering them in in FedEx, the ship center, or whatever it's called, I didn't enter y'all's email. So my bad. I'll do that going forward. I had to run HQ last week, and... um. Oh, man, guys, I don't envy y'all. <laughs> oh, my gosh, James. That's your every day. I did it for like four days and curled in the fetal position. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't my favorite thing. But anyway, uh, Aprils are already out. So if for whatever reason you haven't reached out to me and you did not get yours, please reach out to me through patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. Or if you text 325-305-6107. I'm addicted to my phone, guys, and it's always on me. So that's the quickest way to get a hold of me. But May's recipes, let me put this up on the screen. Boom! The delicious Summer Nights Grapefruit Pale Ale. Forgot to tell you, Todd, I did talk to uh, Imperial, and juice is what they recommended. They okay, re they recommended juice. Who, who did you speak to? Oh, what's the person who runs retail at? It was it was, oh, it was okay. via email. Yeah. I forget their name. Sorry. Uh, was the person who, who runs the retail and and mainly, I think the reasoning is that f uh, juice is always in stock. It's one of their ones that's guaranteed in stock. So uh, there it is up on the screen again. Y'all can't see it obviously, but our audience can. The summer nights grapefruit pale ale. Here's a funny little anecdote, Mister Burns. You bottled that. Was it last summer or it was two summers ago? I forget. I think it was last summer. I think it was too because I found two bottles of it in my my fridge in a in a pile of beer in a, one of the drawers of my beer fridge. Oh, cool! So it's it's still good, right? It's gotta be good. Oh yeah, I drank I've, I drank one the other night. I still yeah. had a couple of bottles too. I'm excited about it because it's a recipe we know is good, is solid. That was actually the one we did when we filmed our extract brew day uh, on bottling, I believe. That's why you bottled it. And, that, and yeah. that, that was one of the ones that was the, the recipe you bottled for the first time and in, insert a double digit number of years here. And uh, accidentally on some of them over carved it, didn't you? And, on all of them. Oh, on all of them. Okay. It's not a choice. There's <laughs> oh, not yeah. a choice. So yeah, <laughs> when you bottle that is you're right. That is the that is the the woes of, of bottling. You're right. Because you do the priming sugar and everything in the bucket and it's equally yeah. distributed. But Anyway, which reminds me to ask you all, I kind of got an answer from Todd, but he, he learned about my self-consciousness, uh and so he exploited it. it was the, the Kolsch, is it okay? I finally brought the Kolsch. I want credit for that from our audience. But uh, did it turn? My biggest fear is uh, I knew it was undercarbed. I assumed it would. Is there infection present? What, how, what's the verdict? You on know, the I tried it last night. I did detect a little off flavor. What was the off flavor? What was it? I'm just messing. I know, with you, dude. It's perfect. Yeah, it's wonderful. You got him. Yeah, I had some last night. I I think the trick was uh, letting it sit in a keg and forgetting to bring it to y'all for nine weeks. That was the yes, trick. yes. Was the no, I had I had one at the pool last night. Nice, perfect. We need to get. Not, I mean, obviously you need a kegerator up by the pool, but we need to get you some pool safe glasses because I always I've been taking cans up there with me when I go skinny dip in your hot tub when you're out of town. Yeah. And because uh, I I feel bad try, taking glassware up there because Lord knows yeah you, I have, you would I have ban a few me. of those Tiva what is it Tiva Tivas or you know the double walled glasses I'm gonna get some more of those too perfect yeah we need uh, either I want to make some Tervis Tervis yeah Tivas I think are the old sandals that that have Velcro I think those are Tivas uh, that all, all the climbers in the nineties warm. Anyway, um, let me get back on track. Not to, to be confused with titties, right? Not to, <laughs> hey, 
Man, now I got now 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 we're getting a one star review. How no you? no don't you remember those? <laughs> no, when, when I was spell that. Oh yeah, look them up. Uh, it's it was a great uh, a great beat shoe in the like in the eighties. What are you talking about? Spell well, that. Google it. Yeah, no, you doodle it, but spell it for me. I, I maybe I didn't hear what I thought I heard. What was that word you said? Titties. I heard titties. That's what I heard. Yeah, they're, they're There's great. another one star review now. They can't get to a podcast <laughs> without. Se- I'm telling you, it's like oh, every they're, uh, they're, they're uh, titties flip flops. They still they still make them. I didn't know spell that. I'm gonna it. buy another pair. So I'm gonna buy another pair. Uh huh. I'm googling that now. I can't. My I have, um, I have family safe uh, search on my computer, guys. Okay. <laughs> why wouldn't it be family safe? Not just, uh, what uses a family more than that? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, wow, well, they're expensive now. Yeah. I remember they were expensive when I was a kid, but they're seventy four wow, dollars now. Seventy three dollars. Yeah, wow, they look like those cheap uh, dollar store flip flops. Oh no, they're super thick, and they had they went all the way around your feet. They were great. They were the best. I had them. I'm when telling I was, you, when I was what? like 12 years old. Oh yeah. Oh, no, that's not them. That's not them. No, no, no. Here, I'll show you. James on his screen. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> right. Audio only, listeners. It, 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 oh, oh shit. It did, Unplugged it. Y'all are no. I we still see you. <laughs> you can. Yeah, yeah. Why can't I? Okay, can you see him now? Oh yeah, I see him. That yeah, the that's uh, ever, man. Oh my Except, god. I mean, they're they're probably better than Birkenstocks, but I haven't been able to uh, find. Audio them, only so. listeners, I apologize. Hit the skip forward fifteen seconds a few <laughs> times while he's getting his camera position. And actually, I'll segue us back back on the screen again. Go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour join our recipe receiving tiers and get the summer nights grapefruit pale ale shipping out with imperial juice that's a38 i we can assure you from our personal experience that you're going to love this recipe also everybody's eligible any member of any tier in our trub club for the may giveaway which i didn't run this by todd but i saw we had the stop so i made a executive decision is a calibrated lab thermometer from kessler usa i I saw we had just enough Todd and I was like, oh, we're going to we're going to do that. That's going to be good it, because how much you love it. You love your lab calibrated oh, glass God. thermometer I love it. from Kessler. I love it. And we had them on the show. I feel like it was two years ago now, but uh, they, they, they made great stuff. Kessler does good things. So we're happy to give that away again. That's for the May giveaway. Any member of it from one dollar up to our one hundred and fifty dollar level or one hundred and fifteen, whatever the top top tier is uh, for that. All the information is available at Patreon dot com forward slash homebrew happy hour or homebrew happy hour dot com forward slash club to learn more and join. And we appreciate y'all, whether you're supporting us uh, in our chub club or just tuning in every week, we do greatly appreciate you. I have one more bit of trivia for you, Todd, before we get into the show. Do you know what today is? April, or uh, pardon me, May, May 12th. Do you know what today is? Like what anniversary it might be? Mm, it's my no, 14th anniversary, you jerk. 14 oh, years. Four, I happy, made it. I made it. Happy anniversary. I'm not your wife. I don't remember that. And you never remember my anniversary with you. Nope, I don't remember anybody. Don't feel yeah, don't feel me either. For, I know. I, yeah, I know. J- James, uh, what's your anniversary of the company? Uh, I don't remember either. I can't remember whether it was October, or November of uh, fifteen. I think something like that. Yeah, I don't know when my anniversary w- is either. Whatever. I know Sorry. you were in Mexico when but I started. Congratulations it, on 14, 14 wonderful years. Yeah. Wonderful years. Let me take a, fourteen years ago. I was in a job interview and they asked me. Can you do keg cleaning? And I said no, and they still hired me. So here I am, fourteen years later. Jokes on y'all, Todd Burns. But anyway, yeah, I I, I didn't actually remember it either. Except I have a perpetual reminder on my phone that says "Remind Todd about your anniversary." So it's more of a bug you thing than it actually is a sentimental thing for me. But anyway, all that small talk out of the way, guys. We got four questions for y'all for this week. No listener feedback, so I'll get right into the questions. Our first one is a voicemail from our buddy Will from North Carolina. Hey guys, this is Will from North Carolina. Uh, first time caller, um, fairly new listener. My question is about traveling with kegs. I recently went on a trip about five hours from home with a keg uh, on ice. I have a cooler with 
the uh, like a circle cut out in the top so it sits vertical in the cooler. The bottom half of the keg is on ice. Um, but my problem was when uh, we got to the destination, uh, the the keg just poured foam for hours. It seemed like six or eight hours before the keg really settled down. Um, and I was just wondering is is there anything to mitigate that? Um, should I release pressure on the keg and um, repressure it when I repressurize it when I get there? Um, I'm just trying to think out loud. Um, it's the first time I've, I've tried it and. It was uh, it was just a, a a pain in the butt for that first six to eight hours, and then then it finally started pouring well, and and we could enjoy it. Um, anyway, if if you guys can help at all, uh, I do appreciate it. Looking forward to uh, listening to y'all for a long time. So thank you guys. Let me mm. stop it. Todd, That's interesting. Yeah, I don't. I mean, what did he say? Uh, on that what did he say the temperature was i didn't catch that uh, a temperature at an actual temperature wasn't mentioned i mean yeah. not temperature but he said he kept it cold well, right so no, he had it in a cooler and I, he had I, the I, the hole cut in the top of the cooler i'm so, guessing so he I, can, I suspect yeah. it got hot i mean that that would be my suspicion because I think if it was cold it would would have poured okay even after transporting i've transported a lot of kegs and usually if I have problems with them pouring when I get there, it's because they warmed up. So I have that same setup where I cut the top off of a cooler. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say I cut the top. I had a, I have a cooler. I still have it that you can lean a whole keg down in. And when you get somewhere, you can remove one of the lids because it's got a big lid and a little lid on both sides. You can remove them and just stick a corny in there just by chance. And uh, I've done that a bunch of times and it's always poured pretty well, but it's been on ice the whole time. So it's been, you know, colder than 38, maybe 33, 34 degrees and it pours well. But if I take a keg home from here and, and put it in my kegerator, it always warms up a few degrees and, and, and it foams. It, it, that's, it's almost my, in my mind, it's almost certainly temperature or maybe it was a little over carbonated and temperature. That, that would be my guess. Well, is there a rule of thumb or some kind of calculation you use when transporting, even when it's cold, to account for settling? Like, is that not a thing? Like, if the keg, if the keg is obviously in a vehicle, it's not completely still, and it's going to swash around. Does that not affect foam for the first insert time here, or is it more other factors that would lead to foam? Obviously, eight hours is way too long. For I don't, yeah, I don't think it'd be eight hours. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's... Like an hour? I mean, fo swirling around and everything. The only problem I've had with that is if I had a lot of sediment, then I was, you know, I was, I was pouring a beer that had a lot of sediment in it. But it, I think if the beer was really cold, even if it was sloshing around and stuff, it's all contained. It's all under pressure. I just, I mean, yeah, I'm sure if you transport a keg, it's probably not going to pour very good in the very, very beginning, but. Yeah, eight, eight, seven, eight hours. That seems like a long time for it not to pour well. To have to wait, right? Well, and um, I didn't reach out to Will yet, except to tell him, hey, we're taking your question. I should have asked for clarity because the way you're you're serving it might also be a factor, right? Like if he's short pouring from like a party line of uh, maybe in, inadequate length of tubing and just a, a plastic picnic tap, that, mm -hmm. that might be have a bigger that might also probably pardon me lend itself to the foam rather than having like the proper restriction in the line and or like a cm becker event faucet if you yeah didn't so to be fair i always use a cm becker event faucet when i'm doing that and that would compensate some for warming up and it would compensate for uh, you know other issues as well because you can just restrict it so much so um james you've transported kegs to the coast and yep. some oh, other right. times, well, what was your experience? I had, uh, well, I was also using a, a vent faucet, CMB event faucet. I had two and a half gallon kegs, but I had uh, put a float, uh, like a rubber hose with a clunk on the end of it. So I could set it sideways in the cooler and it drafted fine. I remember uh, that trip. That was a few years yeah. ago on your beach trip, yep. right? You're doing the beach trip it this was. summer? Always. Yep. You, you taking the keg or because you didn't last year. The no, keg. yeah. 
I don't know. I may I may do that again this year. So it, just, it worked good. You, you start brew, brew a check lager now. And it'll yeah, be, yeah. It'll be ready. I, we your... need we need to brew. I haven't brewed <laughs> well, anything in months. And we've got a. I think we need. I I, I like the idea of brewing some more summer beers because mm-hmm. I, t- I found at the pool. I'm all about the pool right now because it's <laughs> been my first summer with it. Uh, I always, boy, those summer beers are good up there, you know? You know, yeah. it tastes better at that altitude. I'm all, it is definitely summer now. It is. I'm, I'm about your pool, too, until you remind me you only wear swim trunks when people are around. You're like, you're like when I'm there, you're like, oh, yeah, I got to go put on the trunks. Josh is here. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've swam every night this week. It's uh, been great. Uh, well, it's highly chlorinated, so it's okay. I shouldn't be that grossed out. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just, it's just the, the image that you give me when you're like, oh, yeah, I only had to put on trunks because you're here. Uh, but back to Will's question, uh, assuming he is pouring it in like a jockey bots or, or direct draw style, because I mean, most people who are traveling a kid like that, with it sticking out that that is their means mm. of serving right and they're going to have a yeah. disconnect at the top some of the people do the the disconnect with the faucet right on the disconnect and and things like that what are some like he, he mentions depressurizing and that james would that have any mm-hmm. effect on the on the foam do you recommend certain practices when transporting or do you can it be fully carbonated and, and pressurized do you prefer that way when you're traveling a keg I like it fully carbonated and, and, you know, at serving pressure, at least, you know, if, if he's having foaming issues, you can do what most people do and turn the pressure down until you get, a, at least you can get something out of it without foam. But we had issues. I don't know if y'all remember the one tray show. We had that uh, cold plate. It, it poured nothing but foam all day long. And yep. I think it was maybe because we were, it, it was too cold. It, the cold plate, we had ice under it and ice on top of it. I know that sounds stupid, but we were also serving pulling from a warm uh, keg. So warm beer was getting cooled instantly. It was creating a lot of issues for us. It was terrible. I do remember that. Uh, so temperature is always to me, and Todd, Todd's more the expert on this, but temperature a lot of times is to blame for foaming when they think it's something else. I, t- I frequently, Todd, share your video of tr- troubleshooting foam. And, and you, you think it would be uh, reasonable to share it for this as well, like put it in the show notes, it would be applicable. Sure. Most, yeah, most, absolutely. Because I mean, even, it, you know, your video is technically showing resolving foam on a home kegerator or a teaser. Yeah, but it's the same no matter where. I was going to say, it's the same principle regardless. Of, it's, it's for any so draft system, right? Can I can I bring something up that's related but not exactly? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I did an install on a uh, – uh, a fuzzy's taco shop actually that opened locally and we were having foaming issues and I went in and, and somebody else had set up the, the, I left all the stuff because they were going to do it themselves. I shouldn't say I did the install. I, I dropped the stuff off and <laughs> helped them for a while, but they wanted to, they were going to do their own lines and everything. Cause when I left the cooler, wasn't even on and the beer wasn't there. So I can't, they were having foaming issues and I went back and it, you know, all the normal things, it, it was a little hot, uh, hotter than it should have been. But even after it cooled down, we were still having foamy issues. They had run their lines with loops in them because they just, they used a lot more line than they needed to, especially with flow control. And they put loops in it. And what happens is the, the CO2 collects at the top. So when you turn the faucet on, it circles around and shoots out the faucet. So they were getting spurting. So I don't know if we even ever talked about that on the uh, on that podcast. But that's another thing to look for is uh, if you're cl- if you've got a high spot in your lines and you're accumulating a lot of CO two, you're going to get that spurting effect. So there's there's three main things that that uh, that are attributed to foam or cause foam, I should say. But then the, then there's a bunch of little minor things that can also cause foam. But it's almost always either temperature restriction or carbonation level those are the three things it's going to be 99 percent of the time yeah and, and or it could be all of them in certain uh, levels absolutely. Yeah, absolutely that's the biggest headache is when it's all of them and some of the little things like oh i also happen to have uh, sediment stuck in my gas post or my or my liquid po- uh, there's there, like todd said there, there's a yeah. bunch of things it could be but you said podcast you mean the foam video 
that was yeah which which i'll put in the show notes uh will because i think it'll be it would be relevant for you but it's also at youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour along with all of our content like all of our weekly episodes booze news weekly i did it this week uh uh i want credit for I that, saw that. Too. <laughs> finally last week i was like oh it'll come back and i i got to the office at 8 a.m and i was like I'll, I'll record it that evening i crashed when i got back to the barn <laughs> after monday mondays suck up there guys <laughs> How, why didn't y'all tell me that <laughs> suck. yeah it's terrible the thought of you having to work really bothered both of us on Monday <laughs> when we were when we were traveling i'm glad yeah. i wasn't the only one affected yeah i had to come home to tell your wife and, and try not to sound like a sissy because i could see the just the apathy on her face like oh you had a hard day hmm. <laughs> have you ever had a hard day no it's been 14 years um <laughs> will so yeah i think um like, like todd said i mean i don't know if the like the the, the subject of resolving foam is something we cover a bunch but it's still so broad that it's like I, I always that's why we make content the way we do like these videos so that we can point people and help them try to troubleshoot it since it is kind of case by case so go to the go to the show notes and find that video or or go to again youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and appreciate you submitting the question this is a great time for me to remind y'all if and when we take your question on a future episode and it's a voicemail you get a $25 gift card to kegconnection.com. If it's a text or an email or Facebook message or whatever, you still get a $15 gift card. But we're really trying to – Todd lights the voicemails. He, I think it reinforces that we have an audience listening. He, For the longest time, he thought I was making up questions. So your voicemails prove that I – Yep, I do like the voicemails. They prove that I can yeah. do – great impressions of people from all over the country so anyways will thank you again so much our second question was a text message i totally made up from our buddy nick using our hotline at 325-305-6107 nick wrote inflation is killing me boys what's the best affordable style i can brew these days uh that that is as straightforward as it gets from someone like me. Kolsch is super straightforward. The ingredients are, are easy to keep on hand and keep in bulk, and it's hard to mess up. I've done it before. I would say a smash. A single malt, single hop, is, you can't get any simpler than that. that. Was- Less fermentables to buy. Uh, keep the ABV low so you don't have to do a lot of yeast. And uh, that would be... That would be my choice. Actually, you know what? I changed my answer. It to be a literal answer. James is the right answer because you keep you keep the dry at 05. I guess can, you mm-hmm. could brew a Kolsch with 05, but it's not a Kolsch strain, so it would, it would be a blonde at that point. But yeah. either, either way, you, yeah, the Smash American Ale that was your, was your recipe that was included in one of the beginner kits that we used to have, That you, that's like <laughs> the most affordable, solid result recipe I can think of very crushable oh. um what was the it was that one was pilsen but i forget it was what, pills and malt and then it was uh columbus columbus hops and right. sao5 that's right that that yep. would be very affordable to keep on hand and, and to brew and to enjoy what you're brewing because uh, yeah he used the word affordable i like the word cheap but cheap always has negative connotations like brewing on a budget doesn't mean you have to brew bad beer no huh Todd, do you simple's what, always better? What do you think in regards to affordable styles people can be brewing in these tough, tough economic days? I mean, I think there's a lot of affordable styles. If basically, as a general rule of thumb, that when you're brewing a lower alcohol beer, a lot of times you're using less grain. It's going to cost less. Uh, particularly, you know, even uh, something we brewed that I brewed recently, an ESB. Um, what us see. That uh, summer beer that I brewed, Pilsner. Pilsner's not expensive to brew. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of beers that are more affordable to brew. I mean, they're gonna a lot of times they're gonna have lower alcohol. So you know, some people might argue you could brew a beer that costs twice as much and only drink half as much and still get <laughs> the same effect. So I'm joking, but yeah. kind of. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a good amount of grain equals alcohol. And that's where most of your cost is. And then the other thing to avoid obviously is Josh and James's favorite highly hopped beers because highly hopped beers, uh, you've got a lot of money in hops. Uh, 
when you have a lighter hopped beer and, and, a, and a low grain build, you're, you're going to have a very affordable beer. The only Absolutely. reason I'm not a fan of them, Todd, is because I'm cheap. I mean, you know, also, <laughs> I don't want orange juice at, with every sip, but <laughs> yeah. you know, we got another one-star review. <laughs> <laughs> I like hoppy beer. No, hoppy beer is fine, guys. And I actually, I, lo- I mean, you know, I love hoppy beer. I know. So and I, I, yeah. I don't dislike them that much. It's just not my go-to. I actually, so I'm digressing because I'm good at that. I went to Spets yesterday because I'm, I'm hosting a graduation party for Todd's daughter on Saturday. And my fridge, yeah, I, my, my whiskey was low and my beer of commercial ones that I know that people would like was low. So I went and got some Hans Pills, which is a super crushable, delicious, yep. very straightforward beer. Mm-hmm. But I got you that community mosaic IPA because that's Ooh, an I IPA like you beer. love. But it's also one of the few IPAs that if I see it in the fridge, I'm going for it. I love I, it. I, I really like it. But you're gonna, my wife's going to have to drive home. God, that's like got a high alcohol. It's content. very high. I figured she, yeah. you're, the, you're, the home y'all are talking about is a block and a half or three blocks away. <laughs> you can just stumble home, man. I'll, I'll get oh, one. No, of, no, I, I, we're staying in a hotel. Oh, you're not. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, I could Uber home. You could just yeah. Uber home, or one of the girls can uh, take you in their little Barbie Jeep. We'll, we've got transportation, man. You're gonna be fine. And I, one of your buddies is coming. I like the bar. You mean one of your girls in there? That's what I meant. Jeep. My, my. That's I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> they did show for. Yeah, you. get a video of that. <laughs> If we could get Todd to fit in the Barbie Jeep, that's worth uploading. I could uploading. just see the cop that pulls us over. Uh, I've got a, a six-year-old with a drunk male Caucasian, yeah. extremely overweight. Extremely. Uh, yeah. Sir, how did you fit in that car? <laughs> oh, officer, we have a problem. But, but yeah, I did. But I, the, the reason I just bring it up is because it, it reminds me how uh, – it's funny people well you like this guy talking about i i have beer on tap it's all usually at my pops and the beer i have in the fridge here is like mainly kolsch and while i think oh everyone loves kolsch i have pilsner or quell a lot of that too but not everyone wants that straightforward some people do want like hoppiness included and all that but for the sake of nit's question i can't in good faith say that ipas are affordable to brew they're, they're just not like when, no, they're not. No. So, um, the smash. I, I changed my answer as much as it pains me to not just go straight for the Kolsch because the Kolsch that we brew Kolsch is cheap. I mean, it, you don't it is, but but answer. but I mean, but but if you just like a very straightforward summer lawnmower beer, I, I don't know. I, I've run the cost analysis. I think your Kolsch may be the same as a smash. I think you're good. I, I think, you, think you can so? stick to your answer. Okay. Well, yeah, because they they make dry yeast for Kolsch too. They do. You're right. Lala Man apparently mm-hmm. has a fantastic yeah. dry yeast for for Kolsch. You could do an affordable Kolsch, no problem. Nick, the best way to brew affordably is to secretly have Todd's credit card and just bulk buy what you need. Claim or just it. steal the ingredients from upstairs when you come to work. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah. did you put a camera back up there? What is it? <laughs> that was oddly specific. Um, <laughs> I, as I have two buckets over here with ingredients uh, uh. one's an alt i still haven't brewed that alt and then i did take a kolsch uh because i the kolsch i gave y'all i got super jealous that i don't have kolsch from that batch i need to brew in 15 gallon batches dad let's get the brow tent set up man come on, come on scott <laughs> come on scott for the sake i can't brew 10 gallons and give it away i i you know i was i was seriously forgetting y'all's kids but then a part of me was like but was i forgetting them or was I purposefully leaving them here, hoping they'd forget? <laughs> uh, there was a little bit of me in the back of my mind. But anyways, Nick, happy brewing. If y'all have different answers to what we said, if you th- have some creativity for brewing on a budget, leave it in the comments below or email me, Joshua, at homebrewhappyhour.com. Our third question is another voicemail from our buddy James from Michigan. Hey, Josh. This is uh, James from Michigan. and started home brewing during the quarantine lockdown uh, with our bubble families. Uh, one of the guys is a home brewer and showed us how to do that. And I have been down the rabbit hole. I have a 20 gallon kettle now and so on and so forth. My question is, I hear you guys mentioning using DME if you have low gravity during a brew day or adding dextrose to help bring up your uh, eventual ABV. But my question is, how do you take a reading during a brew day before the boil, and how do you calculate what 
your gravity is, so you know if you need to add to it or something of that nature. So, again, James in Michigan just uh, wanted to figure out how to fine-tune my beers a little more, and I feel like that is discussed quite a bit on the show. So I'd love to hear what uh, you and James and Todd have to say. Uh, and then he went on to, to leave his phone number and stuff. And James, I can't do that to you. You're no Todd Burns. I don't want to publicize <laughs> your your phone number to the world, Todd, which I'm actually surprised I haven't heard about more inappropriate photos being sent to you, Todd. You you are pretty safe after sending your phone number. Yeah, there. I need to give your number. Oh, Lord podcast. have mercy. <laughs> I, will, I, I will edit that episode. Um, anyway, so I, mean, I, I have I pay for it. I can give it out. Oh, <laughs> weak, <laughs> weak. That's right. You do pay for it. Man, you pay for a lot of stuff. Look at my office. And Anyway, uh, James, uh, this is from James. I'm going to kick it to you first. We do mention yeah. DME all the time because it is good to have mm-hmm. on storage. It comes in handy a lot. What, yeah. what, what is the go-to way to measure? I mean, I know the answer. But well, we, d- we, we use a refractometer, and we monitor it continuously during the bowl. Yeah, I check it during the mash too, and then when, I'm do- when I do the sparge because you don't want to go under a certain level of gravity. But usually with our, with our system – we're not even close to that, but it's how we get the volume on the boil kettle. So as it's boiling, I have a little refractometer, put a few drops on the lens, monitor it throughout the uh, boil. And you can tell by the time you get to the 60 minute, if you need to add some DME, boil. you can also boil down. You lose a little bit of volume, but you can boil down to gravity or you can boost the gravity with a little DME. And that's what we do. What is the... It- do we have a Brits calculator on Homebrew Happy Hour? Or I forget where you which calculator uh, the, you use. Do you if use you, from go, Brewers if Friend? you go to Brewers Friend, Friend. but the 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 refract armor that we use, it has a direct oh, specific gravity reading oh. on it. I still yeah. d- this blows some people's mind when I remind them. I my pop and I have still never used a refractometer ever. Yeah. It, Todd's got one that just reads bricks, so you have to convert it online. But actually, have but, both. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> My other one, bro. Yeah, no, no. I still got one that. Yeah, I've got both. Sometimes I take a reading with both and compare them. <laughs> Todd, Todd's brew days is no. something we should film. <laughs> yeah, but Todd's brew days are something we should film with just a camera on him, not just so people they think we're making this up, James. That he takes a reading. I feel like every ninety seconds of something, temperature reading, uh, Brits reading. Uh, I mean, everything is getting his beers changed. are solid, but so they, there's, it obviously works. No, no, I, th- I think you could safely go five minutes. Okay, you're right. Five minutes. I did, <laughs> I did exaggerate by ninety seconds, but five minutes is much more close uh yeah the ca- you know i say this all the time james the calculators are a brewer's best friend and we are living in the greatest time ever uh, to be alive and be a home brewer with this technology at our fingertips like i said at homebrewhappyhour.com we have a whole page of calculators brewer's friend if you have any software that you're using for brew day mm-hmm. brew father brew smith i guarantee you all of those have tools built into it to help you brew better and to do the calculating for you you just plug in what the temperature of the ward is and this and that and then boom it's going to tell you like james said oh your best bet would be to boil down or add water or whatever you have to do to hit the gravity that you're going for you know for me and yeah. my pop sometimes we're like we just get the gravity we end up with and then uh, uh, you know some brood at one brew day in particular i forget what we had to do i called you frantically like what do i do and you're like oh just boil down and so we yielded a little bit less but for the sake of keeping our beer in the range we needed it because we were going to be way off if we if we yeah. hadn't boiled down but todd you're you're the, the the man of many measurements is uh everything we said sound good to you or do you have more yeah, to- I, i'm gonna have a t-shirt made uh uh, many measurements worry and have a homebrew Todd Burns. <laughs> yeah the opposite of charlie yeah, <laughs> many, well i say that you're not yeah you're not actually worrying you're you're um a bit of a not and perfectionist might be the wrong word but you have your system when you're brewing and it's just the habit you've created and like james said i give you a hard time when it's funny but your beers are still the best coming out of our group so no, that's the, not true but they you are no 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 i'm extremely not extremely good beers. no no no. i agree no no james mates really good beer and i agree like there are some styles my dad and i know yeah i mean the one i agree you but i gave me is I, i'll tell you i had yeah. two beers last night and they were both really 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 good your beer and james's hellas i haven't had the hellas yet when did that get carried oh, oh no that was the hellas that's been on tap no, that Hellas is real good. I agree. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not being self-deprecating. Look, I'll boast that batch of Kolsch was phenomenal. But 
I'm saying your beer consistently style to style has just been yeah. so good. That's why James and I are like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, man. It's a uh, yeah. That lemon drop pills. I've brewed that many times and you've got me beat on that one. Cause it was, it was delicious. I forgot that is your new favorite yeah. of all time. Todd, like he was, ba- he was basically saying, Todd, save some and bottle it for na- homebrew con for, so, for uh, national homebrewers convention. Yeah. yeah. How long ago did you run out of the Hellas, James? Do you think? Shoot, I don't even remember. I I, I, didn't, I haven't brewed any beer for. Yeah, so you you gave months. me that you gave me that keg, and I have I you know I've had nine beers on tap, so people have so much to choose from, and mm-hmm. and I like it so much, I don't ever recommend it. And people <laughs> that don't people that don't know beer very well, they're like Hellas. That yep. sounds like yep. something out there. I'm not going to try that. So. Yep. Oh, I <laughs> yeah. I agree because I think he gave it to you in December, if I'm not mistaken. I believe. It's still great. I mean, oh, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, it's super. Yeah. No, you, what are, you have nine on tap again or not? Cause when I just came up, when y'all were out of town, you, you your kegerator was awfully empty, my friend. It was depressing. No, no, no. There's, there's all the, all the taps were full except one. Oh yeah. But the, okay. And there but, was three outside. You're no, just too lazy no, to go out there. No, no, no. <laughs> all the faucets were off of the outside and I opened and none of the kegs were connected. You were trying to keep me out of that beer. Yeah, I, I, I know. What you, the faucets off. <laughs> see, I know what you were doing. And, and, and here's the no, worst. Remember I loaned the faucets out and I just got them back. You loaned them out. Shut up. I, here's what, here's <laughs> what a, there was a, there were, fa- there were the, uh, uh, CMB at Swans. Uh, par- party faucet you know the uh, i know i could event faucet but here's you what could have hooked one here's up here's what here's, i knew you wouldn't do it though i knew you wouldn't do it i drink your whiskey uh here's what i did instead well here, here's what threw me off james was he i i i was like oh no all the faucets are off and i opened the fridge the kegs were all disconnected and i lifted the front one i should have lifted all of them and it, that was the breakfast stout which has maybe a, a pint left in it yeah. And so I go, oh, no, all the beers out here are tapped. That's why no faucets are on. I had no idea you had the keg of alt beer still. Like the, <laughs> I would have. Yeah, you stay out of my alt beer. Oh, now it's going to be gone by the uh, time I come back I'm gonna, up. I'm gonna put, I want to put the alt beer right next to the Kolsch tonight. And, oh, and, yeah. and, and put them on the menu. That'd be fun to have them next to each other. My dad, that's what we did for that party. My parents recently hosted nice. the, the birthday party, yeah. and it was it was very well received. James, the alt beer you did was oh really? Oh, cool. it's good. That's a it. good alt beer. So good. It's so good. But anyways, uh, wrapping up James's question here, uh, the, having the DME is something we'll always recommend you having as a home brewer, ju- just for those just in cases. And then utilizing software and calculators is, is your friend. That's the best way I can wrap up the question is like um, you can you can plug in your info into any given application that's made for brewing and it's going to give you, I mean, and there's calculators for every specific instance and you can get as nitty gritty as you need to. So I think that is the best answer we can come up with collectively. Right. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and also he, he said, I meant to make a note. Uh, he said rabbit hole. I believe he means rabbit trail, but I'm not a hundred percent on, on <laughs> yeah. the saying. There's, okay. Alice. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to say that <laughs> phrase is all I'm saying. Anyway, thank you, James. Last reminder, if, and when we take your question and it's a voicemail, like James's was, we give you a 25, $5 gift card to catconnection.com. Our last question of the day is a text message from our buddy Ryan at 325-305-6107. Ryan wrote, very new home brewer here. I want to keg from day one and found a kegerator on Marketplace. It is almost six years old, maybe half the price of brand new. Is there an average life for these things? Would you buy used or do you prefer new with fridges? I have no experience buying used uh, refrigerators. I know, Todd, you have no qualm about it. Is there something? No, yeah, I don't. I mean, a lot of it depends on what it is. I mean, he, he just said kegerator, right? He he said he found kegerator on Marketplace, which I'm assuming yeah. is Facebook. So, or I mean, I, I was going to, we had a situation recently where we could have bought 75 used kegerators and they were seven years old. So I reached out to some people that are, you know, supposedly experts on this and asked them and they, and I was like, what's the life expectancy of a kegerator? That's a, that's a home grade, you know, standard home grade. And they're like, about seven years. So it's (laughs) funny that, and these were all like seven years old. So we passed on them. So, so, um, but we passed on them for, I mean, if they would have been here local, 
I would have bought them all. I mean, but they were, they were not local. It would have been shipping involved and everything else. But, um, yeah, I mean, I half price, I probably wouldn't pay half price for consumer grade mm -hmm. kegerator used. I would probably try to get it for a third price of a new one. Um, but you know, they're, they've gone up a lot too recently. Yeah. Uh, all that a stuff's lot. a lot more expensive, yeah. uh, you know, and there's commercial kegerators out there, like a true or a, a Bev air that could, they could last 20 plus years. You know, they're very, very well made. So it just depends. Remember that true I shared with you from a restaurant that's closing down near me. And, yeah. uh, there was, I think brand new, they, it was like four grand and they were asking like three grand for it. And you're like, yeah. no, that's definitely not enough. Because in a commercial setting, they're, I mean, that in commercial settings, like it or not, this stuff's like basically borderline abused, right? Like in the way that it's handled and always running and, and cleaning might not be a priority of, of a, you know, a barbecue restaurant that has a kegerator. Uh, uh, God, I would hope it would be, but yeah. Well, I just mean in the beer lines and stuff, like they probably use whatever the distributor, you know what I mean? There aren't a lot of the restaurants. Distributor, distributor probably cleans them every week or two. Okay, but either oh, way, yeah. what I'm getting at every is- Every two weeks, I think. What I'm getting at is these are text. high use systems like where every yeah. day they're you know they're the the taps are getting pulled and drawn and and the, and the fridge is being open and shut and open and shut and open and shut and uh, maybe it's not being every day because once you put the kegs in there but either way, what i'm getting at is it's heavy use and you kind of told me uh, i'd offer them a thousand and see what they say like what was your logic there was it because used the value immediately should get sliced fractionally because yeah, yeah I, I just use stuff it might not have the lifespan remotely close to if I just spent the extra money and bought brand new. Yeah, it was, I think you're overstating the, what I said to offer and what I did. It, it it, yeah. It wasn't that big of a spread. It's, it was basically like 1500 versus they were like 33. Yes. That is what it was. You're right. It was, so it, it was, you know, I, I wouldn't offer, on a commercial keg, you know, especially one that's been used and that, that one had some, you know, some wear on it. Um, it, it to me, it's, it, if you can't get one for half or less, then you're better off probably buying a new one. Right. James, do you have any qualm about used gear? Have I you mean, ever, he have wanted you, almost retail. For no, it. He, he did. It was only a grand or not even a grand. It was like 800 less than retail was what yeah. they were asking, which you're right for something that was like five plus years old. That, that does seem silly, but James, have you ever bought any used gear in regards to brewing? Uh, I, the only time I ever bought a used, it was a used freezer. It was a fairly large. And when we were brewing on big Bertha, you could put three full, uh, three half barrel kegs in it. It, it worked for about three months and quit. No, so, yeah, <laughs> you got burned. No. Yeah, we got burned. So I, I don't know. The refrigeration stuff so expensive to get worked on. I wouldn't take the risk at half the price. I just wouldn't do it. You right. know, save your money and just get a new one. At least you have a warranty of some sort on that. The, you, you stole my thunder. I was about to say, you stuff doesn't have warranties like that. That yeah. like, <laughs> it's very rare you're gonna find Jimbo down the street on Craigslist. Like, yeah, I'll support it for a year. No, they won't. Right. Well, it's it's all final and cash only. And when you come mm -hmm. back and say, "Hey, man, it doesn't work," I don't know who you are. What, what are you asking about? What do you want your money back? But I've never been burned from used purchases, but I don't make them, so you can't get burned yeah. if you don't. Oh yeah, but I don't have any qualms about buying used stuff but, but appliances i I, well, I don't either as a principle i just mean i think it's contextual it's case by case like i don't know if i'd buy a used dryer be, uh, that's more than five years old or something because if the if the price wasn't right like if it was a phenomenal deal shoot yeah i'll take the risk if it's a third yeah. of the price or less than a third of the price yeah and elements are cheap and easy to replace on an electric dryer i wouldn't have a problem with the dryer and a washing machine some of the newer ones now I would never buy a front loading machine right Every, I, you have to think about how many of those you've seen in a front yard going down the road all the time it's not yeah there there's some stuff i wouldn't buy used yeah, but again, to Todd's point a second ago with fridges and stuff, golly, they're going up in price again, and availability is getting low, and so you go on Craigslist, and all these used ones, uh, chest freezers are available, but they're also getting expensive as used, and it's just a risk. It's a weird time right now, right, because there's still supply chain issues, and, right, and right. it's just a weird time, so I mean, my best 
suggestion for my personal stance, Ryan, is that half price on something that old, I would not do. I wouldn't take that risk. Uh, like I didn't know seven years was what some people were telling Todd. That's funny that this one is six years old or going on six years. Yeah, but it really is. It's almost like, uh, like you, we made that up, you know, yeah, but it's true. Yeah. But, but, but six years is old for any fridge, like for, for nowadays, the way they here, I'm going to sound like a boomer now, even though I'm only 36, uh, they don't make stuff like they used to. And they really they don't, don't though. It's planned obsolescence. They, it, they built that stuff in. Exactly. We're so frustrating. My phone, I mean, every, Everything, all electronics, right? So, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know if I would trust it. Now, don't get me wrong. Ryan, when my fridge starts to die out, I'm going to make you a heck of a deal, my friend, with shipping and all <laughs> that, too. Uh, it, all I have to tell you is, yeah, it's running. Not very good, but it's running. But, yeah, electronics these days and and, and appliances and stuff, the planned abs- uh, obsolescence, like, like James mentioned, is so frustrating because – you might luck out and that thing lasts you another five or 10 years. Or like James said, it dies out in three months and you're out whatever mm-hmm. y'all paid for that chest freezer. So yeah. it's a, it's terrible. Uh, I wish I had a, a, a more concrete answer for Ryan, but I think mine would say be no, don't do it. Y'all, y'all agree Buy new if you yeah. can, if you can find it. If you it. can, yeah. Jan- yeah, Todd, just yep. uh, offer them half what they're asking if you're worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> Todd's answer is always my favorite because Todd doesn't get awkward. I don't know where on the spectrum that falls, but you're in that Venn diagram of you like making things awkward and it doesn't affect you. How am I making things awkward? Dude, because, I mean, that's when someone says like, oh, we're selling this for 50 bucks. You're like, I'll give you 10. And you have no, yeah. and it doesn't bother you like that. that that's awkward. Like, no, uh, we'll do 45. Okay, I'll give you seven. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, no. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, we just, we always grew up negotiating like that. I don't know. I know. And, and to be fair, you, you're much better at that. Like I've had to turn things over to you because you're better at negotiating than, than I am or just, getting- I mean, I, but I, I think it's, this is the thing. I mean, this is like the guy that contacted you about the, the fridge the other day. Yeah. It's not that I'm trying to take advantage of the guy. It's that the guy is asking way too much for what he's trying to sell. Right. So he he's asking what he paid for it, what he paid for it five years ago. Right. Because that's what they cost then. Oh, good point. And, and, and they, and that. they had gone up and you were way over studying that he, he was like seven or $800 less. That's what I said. What they are, than what they are now. Today, you're right. You're right. And he paid. That's what he paid for it. He wants to get what he paid for it after he used it for five years. And that's not me trying to take advantage of him. Good that's point. him trying to take advantage of me. Yeah. So at that point, <laughs> you you've got to offer him something that's fair. I love the passion. You're like take off the shirt. Oh, we're gonna fight, and you're gonna give that generator to me for five hundred dollars. <laughs> I love it. Golly, I was getting fired up, man. You just Thank you. slam Thank your you. hand, slam your hand on the desk and speak German. And you would have just, <laughs> it would have been right from the forties. Uh, <laughs> give me the fridge. In the fr- Anyways, Ryan, thank you for submitting the question. I mean, no, it, I'm, I'm a worried what you just said in German without knowing. It. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry. I took two months of Duolingo before that one trip in 2018. I'm totally, right, right, yeah. totally fluent. Uh, thank you so much for submitting the question, guys. That's all I have for this week. Greatly appreciate y'all joining me, taking the time out of your busy day. Uh, I am going to be up there next week. Maybe we can do, maybe, I don't know what days I'm coming up. Maybe we could brew uh, on one of those days on the Brow Tog or, or maybe James, I'm just trying to plant the bud. Maybe James, you brew. What are you doing tomorrow, James? Yeah, have you thought about brewing? We need to, we really do need to brew a batch of beer. Uh, I, I what, do. what kind do y'all want? Cause now that everybody's brewing, everybody gets a keg. So. Yeah. yeah. Y'all tell what, me. what is what are y'all's you, votes? You, I, I, you know what I'm going to want to brew if you leave it up to me. I, I Todd kind of, I think sometimes he gets tired of I brew the same thing all the time. I really have no idea what you were planning on, what you would brew. Uh, Josh, tell him. Well, I, I would think just some kind of Pilsner or some. Uh, there you uh, go. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I, that's what I want. I well, want. There's a lot of kinds of. There's a lot well, of that's pilsners. what I'm saying. But it's some kind of Pilsner. Uh, yep. I, any, any logger, you're the logger man. I want, that's what I want coming from you. Uh, he, he kind of went through an American logger stage where maybe he was on it a little longer than I, <laughs> yeah, but he's kind of over that. So he's going to brew a Pilsner. I mean, you can never brew a Pilsner. Do a German, upset. any kind of German pills. I mean, that, that'd be fantastic. A, a, a good solid German Pilsner. I would like to get to have a, a Pilsner recipe that's just so solid that that's all I kind of like uh, Dusseldorf. Everybody drinks all 
just have one Do really it. good beer. Wouldn't that be cool to have a go to a brewery Your that's known beer. for one good beer and that's all they serve? I told you that's my dream. I mean, well, my dream is really the the Kolsch and the Alt and a taco stand. But the yeah, yeah. I agree. Like if we <laughs> don't. I totally disagree. I, I want. I want <laughs> the more ty- the more types of beer and styles of beer I can. Yeah. Well, then don't come to our bars, okay? How about yeah. that? <laughs> I'll, I'll come there and have a couple of beers and then go somewhere with more and then, selection. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Barbie Jeep down to the next bar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a Barbie Jeep. I like this idea. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you all soon. All right. Thanks. Oh, yeah. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page, or you can beat Todd's best friend if you leave us a voicemail at 325 305 6107. Brew better beer with the new Grainfather G40 all in one electric system available now at grainfather.com. Also, get a pack of Imperial Yeast along with one of our premium recipes when you join our Chop Club. Go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and come brew with us. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. <laughs>